dear students, in this presentation, I uh, will be talking about the introduction part of the welding engineering. Uh, this is the first lecture of uh, the 40 lecture series on the welding engineering. Uh, in this uh, presentation, uh, we will be uh, talking about the manufacturing in general and the joining techniques, uh, especially the uh, introduction part, the need of the welding in different sectors and uh, the selection of the joint for uh, developing the variety of engineering components, we need to uh, use the joints. So, for the different uh, situations, the different uh, types of the joints which are available uh, as an option, how, how to select a particular joint, so that uh, the, the, perfor uh, the performance of the joint uh, can serve the purpose and uh, the comparison of the welding with other manufacturing processes which are uh, available for developing the variety of components like casting, forming, uh, machining and uh, the welding also. Uh, the, the, there are variety of manufacturing processes and the variety of welding processes are available. So, how to select the suitable welding uh, process for a particular situation. Uh, Additionally, the advantages and the limitation of the welding processes will also uh, be taken up and additionally, uh, the applications of the welding in a specific sectors uh, will be given as an uh, example. Uh, we know that uh, in our daily life, we use uh, different types of the components and uh, these are uh, made of the different materials of the different sizes and shapes. So, for manufacturing these components and engineering systems, we uh, use the different manufacturing processes. And uh, when the components made of the different materials in different sizes and shapes, this is done by using the variety of manufacturing processes. Manufacturing basically involves the sizing of the components, sizing of the raw material which may be in form of uh, the square blocks in form of ingots, in form of uh, the logs and they are processed uh, to get the desired size and after getting the size, they are further processed to get the shape which can serve the purpose and uh, can help to develop the manufacturing component. Further, uh, even after uh, sizing and shaping the raw material into the into the desired uh, component form, uh, the components do not perform uh, the, the intended function because of the poor uh, the properties they have. Therefore, one set of the manufacturing processes is also uh, used to uh, to impart the desired combination of the properties uh, to the material so that they can uh, serve the uh, intended purpose and they can withstand successfully for long and during the service. So, the primarily uh, this uh, imparting of the desired combination of the properties to the material is done uh, so that the engineering components can perform successfully for the designed life. For example, in sizing we use bulk of the material uh, in form of uh, the rectangular piece or in God and this is brought down to the smaller section size by uh, say machining or by forming processes. So, uh, shaping means the simple shapes are required to develop the different uh, uh, simple or complex geometries for making the engineering component and uh, the properties imparting the desired properties to get the desired set of the properties in the components of the desired size and shape, so that they can perform for long and this is achieved through the techniques like surface engineering and heat treatment. In the surface engineering and heat treatment, this, these two techniques help to impart the properties that are desired to the components, so that they can perform for long. For example, a simple uh, 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 complex systems like uh, a car uh, uses variety of manufacturing processes. It uses the variety of materials, for example, uh, the aluminum alloys for making wheels and uh, the sheets for making the body for uh, steel or cast iron and even aluminum uh, metals for making 
the engine block. For example, in, in case of car, there are variety of components which are made by the different manufacturing process and each component is made of the different material. Say for example, uh, the cars are, uh, uh, the wheels of the car are made of uh, the aluminum alloys which are manufactured by the casting process and uh, the, the, the body of the car is made of the sheets uh, which are uh, given shape using the forming processes and uh, uh, the uh, engine parts like valves and the pistons are uh, made of the cast irons, aluminum alloys or steels they are uh, produced using machining processes. So, uh, and similarly the different uh, uh, the parts uh, of the sheets of the car body are uh, joined together by the joining processes. So, we can see in this example the four different types of the manufacturing processes are being used for making the important parts of the car. Uh, joining is very extensively used in the development of the car components. Uh, for example, uh, about 3000 to 5000 spot weld joints are used for making the car uh, body and uh, joining the different uh, parts of uh, the car and uh, that is why a lot of uh, work in the area of spot welding uh, of the car components uh, has been carried out and the processes have been optimized especially the GI seats are welded for making uh, these components which impose the difficulty in uh, development of uh, the joint especially with reference to the poor life of the spot weld electrodes um, while uh, welding the GI seats uh, of the car bodies. Similarly, uh, the, the another aspect uh, is the enhancing properties uh, of the components made either by uh, the machining or uh, welding or uh, forming or uh, uh, the casting. Uh, the life of these components is improved further by imparting the desired set of the properties. For example, the piston uh, rings and the pistons are heat treated to improve the wear resistance and have the higher hardness. Similarly, uh, the heat treatment of the wheels of the aluminum alloys is also carried out to increase the strength so that uh, the weight of uh, the wheel can be reduced and the thermal efficiency of the engine can be improved. To improve the tribological life of the components used in automotive systems, the anodizing and uh, the thermal spread coatings are also commonly used. Uh, the different manufacturing process if we see they uh, uh, vary uh, significantly in respect of the approach which is used for giving the size and shape. The manufacturing processes based on the way by which the particular shape is given can be classified as a positive, negative or the zero processes. The positive processes, zero processes and negative processes, this classification is based on the way by which the particular shape is obtained. For example, in the first two processes like the casting and forming, primarily the shifting of the material from one zone to the another uh, take place and, it, uh, and the addition and the removal of the material is not there. That is why these are termed as the zero processes where one uh, ingot or the, uh, the bulk material is shifted from one zone to another to get the desired size and shape. While in case of machining, the unwanted material is removed from the bulk material to get the desired size and shape and that is why this is termed as the negative process where extra and unnecessary material from the bulk material is removed to get the desired size and shape and that is why it is termed as negative process. To get the final size and shape, sometimes simple uh, components and simple shapes are joined together by welding and the allied processes. Since the combination or addition of the material or the simple shape components takes place in this approach of, uh, of uh, manufacturing that is why these are called 
positive processes. And uh, this uh, grouping is uh, based on the way by which bulk material is processed to get the desired size and shape. So, we have I means say this recently and over a period of time variety of the manufacturing processes have been developed. The need to need for the development of uh, the different manufacturing processes have arrived because of the requirement of different sizes and shapes. The geometries are different ranging from very simple to very complex. Simple shape geometries say can be obtained by the forming processes, but the for to obtain the complex geometries uh, the machining and the casting processes are used. Uh, and uh, further the different components made of the different geometries are developed of the different material systems having a wide range of the properties and the physical properties, mechanical properties and the chemical properties. These properties of the material uh, which is being used as a raw material to get the desired size and shape of the engineering component significantly dictate the selection of the manufacturing process uh, economically and successfully. Physical properties of the material say melting point and thermal expansion are very important and that dictate the selection of the manufacturing process. For example, it is easier to uh, get, get the desired size and shape using the casting for the materials having the low melting point and the comparatively low thermal expansion coefficient. But the metal systems having very high melting point will be difficult to uh, bring in molten state and to get this desired size using the casting processes. That is why they are processed using other uh, advanced manufacturing processes or the machining uh, processes. The chemical properties of the material to be processed are also looked into uh, while taking up decision about the manufacturing process to be used and these uh, requirements force many times to develop the newer processes also. Uh, like chemical uh, properties of the material, one material having very good affinity with the environmental gases like oxygen or nitrogen and hydrogen, they need a special precautions while processing and this has led to the development of uh, the joining processes like uh, gas tungsten arc welding and uh, the gas tungsten uh, metal inert gas welding processes and uh, the laser welding processes. Because the metal systems like aluminum, titanium which are very reactive to the oxygen and the other environmental gases need protection during the processing and uh, that is why uh, instead of using the silicon metal arc welding processes for joining the aluminum and the titanium special uh, welding processes like inert gas welding or metal inert gas welding and tungsten inert gas welding processes have been developed. Similarly, if the metal system is uh, uh, sensitive for the corrosion, then at the time of selection of the manufacturing process is also uh, this corrosion behavior of the material is considered. The mechanical strength, mechanical properties of the material to be processed has led to the development of the many new manufacturing processes like uh, the material of the low yield strength and low uh, tensile strength uh, and the good ductility can be easily manufactured using the forming processes. But if the strength is very high, hot hardness is very high, they impose difficulty in manufacturing by the machining processes or other conventional machining processes. This has led to the development of many advanced manufacturing techniques. The dimensional properties of the component to be fabricated and the final uh, component to be obtained also uh, dictate in the manufacturing process and this has led to the development of the many new manufacturing processes also. Like uh, the dimensional properties like tolerance, the size, surface finish and the accuracy. These properties uh, have a requirement for close control and uh, the exactness in size and uh, the good surface finish has led to the development of the manufacturing, many manufacturing processes especially like drilling very deep holes in the components having very uh, high depth to the diameter ratio 
has led to the development of the um, unconventional machining processes. So, if we have many uh, manufacturing processes, which one is to be used? So, uh, based on uh, the requirements and uh, requirement of the component to be manufactured and other conditions, uh, a systematic approach for selection of the manufacturing process must be done and uh, this is uh, uh, carried out by considering the number of points like the complexity of the geometry of the component to be manufactured from the raw material. A simple shape components can be easily obtained by the manufacturing processes like uh, welding and the forming uh, and these processes also offer very high production rate as compared to the other welding other manufacturing processes like uh, the machining and uh, the casting. So, the complexity uh, of the component uh, uh, affects uh, the selection of the manufacturing process like very uh, complex geometries can be easily obtained by the casting and by the machining processes, but uh, the simpler shapes completely simpler shapes can be produced easily uh, using the welding and the forming processes. Number of units to be produced uh, also dictate uh, uh, the manufacturing process selection because it affects uh, for a low volume we can uh, uh, select the simpler systems which are offering uh, the low uh, production rate and uh, involving more manual work. Uh, for example, sand casting can be used for making the few uh, components, but uh, if the large number of uh, the components are to be produced then die casting and mechanized casting processes are preferred to justify the high investment cost related with the die casting or pressure die casting systems. So, uh, the properties of the material uh, like physical properties, chemical properties and mechanical properties must be considered while selecting the manufacturing process. Melting point in the physical properties is important for the welding and the casting processes, while the chemical properties are important for the welding and uh, uh, the forming process and the casting process also. The mechanical properties are important, mechanical properties like a strength and the ductility are important while looking uh, for the selection of the manufacturing process, especially machining and the forming processes. Uh, similarly, the number of components to be produced also affect uh, the selection of the manufacturers, ma manufacturing process significantly. Say for few manufacturing, uh, for manufacturing few components, we can use completely simpler process in, in involving not much investment. If the number of components to be produced are very high, then we can go for high investment because low volume production uh, cannot be justified for the high. Uh, investment uh, casting machines. So, uh, when the number of uh, components to be produced uh, are very high, um, then we go for high volume production. For example, uh, the few uh, components can be produced easily using the sand mold casting process, but uh, for manufacturing uh, the large volume, uh, large number of units, uh, uh, it is uh, desired to go for the pressure die casting and other mechanized uh, casting processes. The properties of the material to be processed uh, significantly dictate the selection of the manufacturing process, especially with reference to the physical, chemical and mechanical properties. Uh, and uh, the dimensional properties desired in the component also affect the selection of manufacturing process. For example, if whether very small size component to be obtained, then we can go for processes like machining or the casting, but for very large size uh, components sometimes uh, uh, the welding and uh, the casting processes are also used. And uh, similarly, uh, the surface finish, the dimensional accuracy and the tolerance desired in the component dictate the selection of the manufacturing process. Machining offers very good tolerance and very good, uh, very close tolerance of the components and very good surface finish can be obtained. 
but uh, the casting and uh, the farming process processes do not allow that much close control over the dimensions and the finish desired. Most of the components produced either by welding or machining or casting or farming, they require finally, machining to get the desired size and shape for variety of the engineering applications. Uh, now, we will look into further the, this categorization about the zero and the negative processes. The casting and forming process mainly involve the shifting of the material in very controlled way and this shifting of the material from one uh, size and shape to the desired one is obtained using the heat and the pressure either singly or in combination. For example, in forming uh, the pressure is used to deform the things plastically to get the to get the desired size and shape uh, some, and this can be done with or without application of the heat but uh, uh, the casting involves the application of heat first to get the raw material in the molten form and then get uh, the desired size and shape by pouring into the mold this uh, solidification of the molten metal in the mold can happen uh, under the normal gravity uh, conditions or under the external pressure conditions. So, both heat uh, and pressure can be used singly or in combination to shift the material from one zone to the another and the get the desired uh, size and shape. And this is done in very controlled manner, so that the desired finish and uh, the tolerance can be achieved in the component being manufactured. Machining is considered to be as a negative process, because unwanted material uh, is removed from the bulk material in form of the very small chips uh, and uh, the desired size and shape is obtained. But the whatever material is removed that we cannot use for any other purpose and this material is mostly removed in form of uh, the small chips. So, this also leads to the loss of the metal worth which cannot be used for any other engineering application. It is uh, simply used for remelting purpose, so that it can be recycled. So, we will be looking into the greater detail of the zero processes the, and uh, which uh, involves just shifting of the material from one zone to the another. This is the casting one. Casting is one of the simplest uh, uh, route uh, and simplest and fastest way of getting the desired uh, product uh, and uh, uh, this is very uh, popular and very common in, in the industry we, and used uh, for making the components of very simple shapes to the very complex shapes or of very small size to the very uh, huge sizes. The simple shapes can vary from making the simple ingots of the rectangular or square shapes to this very complex shapes like cylinder blocks and the cylinder heads and the size also can vary from few mm to the few meters also. This we can see the one big uh, the component being uh, uh, fabricated using uh, the casting and the other components uh, which can be made using the casting processes. These products uh, indicate that the, the geometries which can be manufactured using casting process can vary significantly from simple to the uh, very complex shape or from very small size to the big one. The basic steps in casting involves the first development of the um, uh, cavity uh, which corresponds to the, uh, uh, the shape which is to be manufactured. It is uh, basically about uh, uh, making the cavity of the component of the shape uh, uh, to be manufactured by the casting process. So, in this one first uh, the shape uh, the cavity is uh, made and then that cavity is uh, filled in by the molten metal. So, the material of which component is to be made is brought to the molten state by the melting one and uh, the any external heating source can be used for this purpose like it can be pit furnace 
can be induction furnace or electrical resistance furnace. After melting the material, it is poured into the mold of the desired size and shape. Uh, during the pouring, care is taken especially to avoid the unnecessary turbulence in the mold and uh, the insertion or a suction of the gases, which can introduce variety of defects in casting. And uh, once the pouring is over, the solidification of the molten metal takes place. And uh, once the solidification is over, the things are obtained, uh, means the co cast components are obtained and removed from the mold. And for this purpose, manually either mold can be broken in case of the sand mold or in mechanized casting processes, it can be ejected in mechanized manner. And this is how the casting can be completed. And once the casting is over, uh, it is cleaned to remove the unnecessary extra material left over the surfaces in form of fins or the parting lines. And then finishing uh, can be done using the and this uh, both these cleaning and finishing can be done using the fettling process. And uh, then finally, castings can be inspected to uh, check the integrity of the component or the presence of the defect if any is there in the casting. This uh, uh, the casting process has been shown schematically with the help of uh, this diagram. Here the raw material uh, in form of ingot is first brought to the molten state using suitable furnace and then molten metal is uh, brought in form of, uh, with the help of ladle to the mold and then it is poured into, into uh, the mold. This pouring has to be done carefully so that the entire mold cavity is filled in uh, with the molten metal and once the solidification is over, the, the, the uh, mold is taken off and the casting is obtained. The forming is another a zero process, which involves simply shifting of the material from uh, the one zone to the another. And this uh, is done by plastic deformation of the work material, mostly using the compressive forces. Uh, however, other shear and uh, uh, the tensile forces can also be used to uh, deform the material plastically and get the desired size and shape. The formed components uh, are generally found to be stronger than those uh, manufactured using other process, because when the plastic deformation takes place, material is work hardened and work hardening makes the material stronger by increasing the hardness and yield strength. However, this happens with the reduction in ductility of the metal. So, and in the manufacturing uh, process by forming, uh, it involves uh, as I said, the plastic deformation of the bulk material. Say this is the raw material in form of rectangular block. Uh, it is uh, deformed plastically with the help of uh, a punch. So it is given uh, first uh, a shape of uh, this kind and then deformed further to close uh, the die and uh, the cavity in filled in by the material. So uh, ranging from means uh, the by applying the force material is given some intermediate shape and then the final shape is obtained. A small amount of the material uh, comes out of the die cavity in form of the flash. So, this plastic deformation causes the work hardening of the material, which in turn increases the hardness and the strength, but at the cost of the ductility and this makes uh, uh, the formed component stronger than those manufactured by casting or welding and the machining processes. This is another forming process where the bulk material is forced to pass through the rollers and then uh, mainly thickness is reduced, width is largely maintained and thickness is uh, reduced by a small amount. So, this uh, process is called the rolling one where metal is forced to pass through the rollers to reduce and the thickness of the material. And the machining is the another 
process, it is basically uh, the negative process where uh, to get the desired size and shape of the component, uh, the material unnecessary extra material uh, is uh, removed. So, it is a subtractive process used to get the desired size and shape and finish by removing the surplus material in form of the chips. You can see the one tool and the raw material is used to shape the material uh, and get the desired size and shape of the component. So, here uh, for the machining purpose, machine tools are used, they will provide the relative motion between uh, the work piece and uh, the tool uh, being used to get uh, the, the desired size and shape by removing the unwanted uh, material in form of chips. So, to get uh, the high precision and good degree of finish, it is important that, it that the relative positions between the tool and the work material is maintained firmly and that is why rigidity of the uh, work holding device and the tool is very important and uh, these uh, uh, the relative motion or the relative speed between the tool and the work uh, material uh, also affects the accuracy and the finish which can be obtained. Uh, another uh, process, this is a positive process, is called joining where simpler shape components are joined together to get the desired size and shape of the final component. It is called a positive process because uh, the simpler uh, parts and the components are brought together are joined together to get the desired configuration. It is a positive process used for assembling uh, the different uh, members to get the desired configuration. Variety of the joining uh, uh, approaches can be used. For example, in this case uh, the gas welding is being used uh, for joining the two simple components. The brazing here in this case has been used for joining the two components. The adhesive joining can also be used. This is very common for uh, joining the two components having uh, the metallurgical incompatibility because there is uh, no melting or uh, heating uh, is involved. The mechanical joints like nuts and bolt systems can be used for making uh, the joint and it is a very uh, reliable and uh, offers good uh, strength of the joint and has been very commonly used for making the assemblies. The fusion welds are used like say in this case the pipes have been joined together by fusing and the edges of the components to be welded. Spot welding is another joining process which is commonly used in automotive industry for joining the thin seats. Similarly, soldering is used for joining of uh, the thin and small size components like strips and the wires. Um, they are commonly uh, the common joints which are used in industry for making the assemblies are uh, can be put in three categories like mechanical joints where nuts and bolts, clamps and rivets are used for uh, getting the desired size and shape and the configuration using the simple shape components. The adhesives like epoxy resins and fevicols etcetera are used for those uh, for joining those systems which are metallurgically incompatible and involves no heating. Uh, adhesives uh, helps to uh, join the components uh, uh, significantly uh, without uh, any difficulty and the welding and its allied processes like the welding, uh, brazing and the soldering are also commonly used in engineering industry for development of the variety of components. Uh, the each type of the joint whether it is mechanical joint or adhesives or the welding, each type of the joint offers the specific uh, set of the properties in respect of their load carrying capacity. Load carrying capacity of the mechanical joints is very good and much higher than the other types of the joints like the adhesives and the welded joints. However, the strength of the welded joints can be higher than the, uh, the base material itself, but uh, 
most of the time they are not found to be very reliable. Reliability of the mechanical joints is very good as compared to the welded joints and the adhesives. Under the critical conditions, the, the welded joints are not very commonly used. However, with the development of the welding technology nowadays, the welded joints are also being used for critical applications uh, like in nuclear industry and the development or fabrication of the bridges. Compatibility of uh, uh, the material to be joined uh, is another important aspect like mechanical joints can be used easily for joining the similar as well as dissimilar metals, but the welding imposes many difficulties while joining the dissimilar metals. So, joining of the similar metals by welding is not an issue, but uh, the welding of the dissimilar metals creates number of problems and uh, that is why if the, uh, the metal systems to be joined are metallurgically incompatible, then the other joining processes like adhesives and the mechanical joints are preferred provided the service conditions or service requirements are fulfilled by the joints. The, the another um, the important aspect related with the joint is fitness for use in the different environments like adhesives can degrade rapidly under the uh, moisture or chemical environmental conditions. So, they may not be fit for use. Similarly, the weld joints or stainless steel weld joints in the ammonia environment and other um, chemical environments can uh, degrade uh, very rapidly. That is why may not uh, the welded joints may not be good uh, in certain specific environments, uh, especially the joints made of the specific metals. For example, the stainless steels are normally not used in the chloride environment and uh, uh, their welding needs very uh, careful uh, consideration. Similarly, the welded joints of uh, the structural steel under the low temperature conditions are also not found to be very fit for use because of uh, the low uh, uh, ductility and the poor toughness of these joints. And uh, the another third uh, means last important uh, point related with the specific features of the joints or characteristics of the joint is the efforts required for development of the joint. The each type of the joint needs the different level of inputs and the expertise for making a successful joint. Mechanical joints are comparatively simpler to develop as compared to the weld joints and the adhesive joints. Weld joints need a very careful uh, application of the welding processes and uh, the designing of the joint. So, uh, the only expert persons can develop the sound and uh, uh, the successful joints, especially for critical applications. So, here we can see the, the each type of the joint, whether it is mechanical uh, or adhesive or the welded joints, they are different in respect of load carrying capacity, reliability and compatibility uh, of the materials to be joined, fitness for use and efforts required for uh, their development. And uh, in light of uh, the availability of variety of options to make a joint, uh, it is important to look into which type of the joint will serve the purpose uh, and perf will help to perform the engineering system for long. So, uh, uh, this, the joints selection in this regard uh, becomes very crucial and uh, for this uh, we should look into that uh, what the requirement is. We want the joint on temporary basis, then it is better to use the rivets or nut bolts and the adhesives which are comparatively of not that permanent kind. And uh, the permanent joints, if we want permanent joints, then the joints can be made using the welding or brace welding and the soldering. Because uh, once if we require the dismantling of uh, the components of which main system is made, then permanent joint imposes uh, many difficulties and uh, therefore, a proper thought should be given 
what kind of the joint is required whether it is temporary permanent or the permanent and accordingly the suitable type of the joint is selected the compatibility between the the members to be joined should also be looked into if the similar type of the members are to be joined like steel to steel welding or aluminum to al aluminum then welding uh, uh, becomes uh, easy uh, but uh, if uh, the joining is to be done uh, you of the dissimilar uh, metal systems then the brazing and soldering are preferred or adhesive and mechanical joints are used because in these processes either heating is not involved or if heating is there it is a uh, very marginal which uh, does not uh, affect the, um, uh, the properties and the performance of the base metal appreciably and therefore another important point to be considered for the selection of the suitable joint is the metallurgical the compatibility between the members to be joined and uh, material properties to be joined is also important uh, for example the melting point and the possible uh, effect of the weld thermal cycle on the material to be joined uh, these two things are important because uh, the met if the metal system is of very high melting point then welding will be difficult better to go for some other options like uh, uh, the mechanical joint but if the weld uh, melting point is low comparatively low and the effect on of the weld thermal cycle is also not expected to be much then welding can be successfully used the section size and the thickness is another important point for example, thin sheets and wires can be joined easily using the soldering, but thick sections require uh, uh, welding by the electro slag welding process or submerged dark welding process. So, uh, similarly, uh, the thermal expansion coefficient, if the joints to be, uh, if the joint is to be made between the members of uh, um, uh, joint to be made uh, of the material having the high thermal expansion coefficient then um, this can cause the problem of the high residual stresses and the distortion tendency. So, it is better to go for the mechanical joints and uh, the adhesive joints if the service load uh, can be taken up uh, these uh, uh, the adhesive joint or uh, the mechanical joint. So, the properties of the material uh, to be joined uh, affect the what type of uh, Mm, uh, the joint should be uh, used uh, and uh, these uh, are mainly the physical properties in form of thermal expansion and the melting point and the dimensional properties like size and uh, the thickness of the component to be made. And uh, once uh, uh, before taking the decision regarding the selection of the suitable joint, it is also required to look into what are the service conditions in which joint is expected to perform and these service conditions may be looked in form of that whether the service temperature is low or the high. If uh, uh, the temperature conditions are very low then, um, then the poor ductile uh, behavior and low toughness of the welded joints can create problem. Similarly, uh, the type 4 cracking uh, in the welded joints can also uh, cause the premature failure of the weld joints under high temperature conditions and uh, that is why uh, this high and low temperature both uh, can be problematic for the weld joints. So, this point is important to be considered while selecting uh, while selection is made regarding the joint among the mechanical adhesives or the weld joints. Uh, further, uh, the high temperature conditions uh, may not be sustained by the adhesive joints because they may decompose and uh, destabilize at high temperature conditions and lead to the poor performance and the life of the adhesive joints. Uh, like uh, this, uh, the material properties, uh, effect of material properties on the selection of the joint, uh, the service conditions uh, in which the joint is expected to perform significantly affect uh, the selection of the suitable joint. Uh, and these conditions are like low temperature and high temperature and the corrosive environment or the conditions in which uh, 
um, the joint is expected to perform. If they are corrosive, then they affect uh, the selection of the joint in big way and then the type and the magnitude of the loading um, also affect the selection of the suitable joint. The low temperature uh, and the high temperature uh, conditions are very important uh, because the, uh, the performance of the joint is dictated uh, by the low temperature and high temperature conditions significantly. Uh, for example, uh, uh, a structural steel weld joint uh, performs in very brittle manner and uh, behaves uh, uh, of, uh, uh, and shows the low uh, ductility and low toughness behavior and the similarly typho cracking is observed at the high temperature conditions and uh, adhesive joints also can degrade uh, the, uh, at high temperature and uh, reduce the performance of the adhesive joint. If uh, the joint is uh, expected to perform under the service, under the corrosive conditions, uh, then the weld joints uh, show the poor performance as compared to the, uh, the mechanical joints. So, it is important to consider whether the service conditions involve the, any specific chemical environment or not. Uh, similarly, the type of uh, uh, loading whether it is a static, static and the dynamic. The mechanical joints perform better than the weld joints and the adhesives under the uh, dynamic loading, but the static loads can be equally take, can be taken effectively by uh, the adhesive load, uh, adhesive joints and the weld joints and, uh, and the mechanical joints equally. However, there will be difference in their load carrying capacity. So, it is important to consider the service conditions in which joint is expected to perform uh, with respect to the temperature and the environment and the type of the loading uh, which can be there on the, comp uh, on the joint. And uh, the another important which should be considered while selecting the suitable joint is the economy or the cost effectiveness. The cost of the mechanical joints uh, is in general uh, found to be lower than the uh, welded joints, but uh, uh, the uh, mechanical joints uh, sometimes increase the weight of uh, the system so, uh, significantly while the adhesive joints and uh, the weld joints help to lower the weight of uh, the component. In uh, industry it is required to develop the weld joints of the different members and plates pipes, tubes, etcetera. So, depending upon uh, the orientation of the members to be joined or the plates to be joined, the uh, weld joints can be classified uh, in the five different ways. So, the, the classification of the weld joints is based on the orientation of uh, the plates or the members uh, to be joined uh, and this can be uh, uh, the types of the weld joints can be in the, in the form of like butt joint where plates are kept, plates or the members to be joined are kept in the same plane and uh, in case of uh, the lap joint, uh, the, the plates or the members to be joined are kept in overlapping position and uh, in case of the edge joint, the, the, the members to be joined or the plates to be joined are kept almost parallel where uh, the edges uh, and the joint is made along uh, along the edge of the plates. This we can explain using the diagram that I will be uh, making uh, uh, just now and uh, then uh, the T joint where one uh, plate is capped, uh, one member is capped uh, horizontal on the horizontal plane and another one is capped vertically and then joint is uh, made. Uh, mostly in this case the plates are uh, used for developing the weld joints and uh, in the case of the corner joints where the corner of the, the uh, ends of the uh, plates are used where uh, they are placed almost at uh, the 90 degree where the angular variation can be uh, up to um, the 15 degree from the 90 degree. So, this we can explain uh, using the diagram. Uh, here. Uh, so, according to this uh, say if we uh, for making the butt joint, uh, the plates to be joined are, uh, are kept in the horizontal plane 
butting each e, butting each other and then uh, by melting the uh, fang surfaces of the plates to be joined the weld uh, is made in case of the lap joint uh, the plates to be joined are kept in overlapping position and then the the uh, the weld joint is made uh, uh, like this near the end of the one of the plates so this will be the single lap joint and if it is made on both the sides then it will be the double uh, lap joint and uh, uh, like a t joint in case of the t joint one horizontal plate is uh, kept and above this uh, another member is brought uh, vertically and then joint is made by putting in a uh, fillet weld one side or in um, both the sides so this is uh, the t joint then uh, edge joint edge joint where uh, the, the the members to be joined are to, are kept in uh, almost uh, uh, parallel to each other where angular variation between the two can be as high as uh, the 15 degree of sorry 5 degree and the uh, the joint is made by putting in the weld metal at the edges of the the plates for developing the edge uh, joint and in case of the corner joint uh, in case of the corner joint uh, the the members to be joined are kept uh, almost at 90 degree uh, near the edges and uh, then uh, by melting um, these uh, the fing surfaces of the uh, of the members to be joined uh, the corner joint is developed there can be different ways for developing uh, the corner joint where um, the beveling can be done either in one side or in uh, both the sides so this is how um, we can develop the different uh, types of the uh, weld joints as per requirement uh, of the industry for uh, developing the weld joints so uh, now we'll uh, see that how uh, the welding uh, is different from uh, the other joining techniques uh, like soldering or uh, uh, your adhesive joints and the mechanical joints. Uh, the welding uh, pr uh, process uh, are found to be significantly different from other joining te techniques and uh, uh, because it involves very uh, localized heating to bring the fing surfaces to the molten state which uh, subsequently after solidification results in the metallic continuity and the produce a weld joint. So, this uh, speci special uh, nature related with the welding uh, causes very localized uh, heating first um, near the fing surfaces while the other areas uh, away from the fing surfaces and uh, uh, in the base metal they are not uh, heated. So, this involves very localized heating and subsequently after heating once the molten metal is uh, uh, obtained by heating the fing surfaces uh, subsequently cooling uh, starts and the cooling also varies um, uh, uh, with the location and the very high cooling rate is observed near the weld or the weld center and uh, it gradually decreases away from the fing surfaces. So, uh, the uh, special nature of the welding processes is that it involves uh, very differential heating and the cooling and this nature leads to the uh, variation in the microstructure, variation in mechanical properties and uh, the development of the residual stresses. Uh, however, this kind of uh, the differential heating and cooling is not observed in the other joining techniques uh, uh, like uh, the adhesive joints and, uh, and the mechanical joints. So, this differential heating and cooling uh, uh, occurring during the welding causes the residual stresses which can be of the tensile in nature and uh, or the compressive. Uh, so, the mostly these residual stresses are tensile along the length of the weld and uh, presence of these residual stresses um, causes the distortion uh, in the weld joint and the reduction 
in the mechanical performance. The mechanical performance of the weld joint is uh, significantly dictated, uh, is reduced in respect of the tensile strength and the fatigue uh, life. The tensile uh, residual stresses also increase the cracking tendency of the weld joints. Another uh, special nature of the welding processes is that only a portion of the base metal is brought to the molten state, while the other portions remain in the solid state and largely at the room temperature. So, the partial melting of the base metal is this uh, a very special feature of the welding processes, which are uh, not found in other uh, joining uh, techniques like adhesive and uh, the mechanical joints. The temperature uh, during the heating and the cooling of the uh, in process of the welding uh, also varies as a function of time and this temperature variation becomes very rapid and it changes rapidly with the uh, distance from the fing surfaces and from the weld center. So, this variation in temperature as a function of time causes differential expansion and contraction in the different areas of the weld joint, which in turn leads to the development of the residual stresses. And these residual stresses, as I said, can lead to the distortion of the weld joints, reduction in mechanical performance. An isotropy in the metallurgical properties, mechanical properties and the chemical properties are, is also observed. And this, uh, the variation uh, in the different properties uh, primarily occur due to the temperature difference and the different weld thermal cycles experienced by the base metal in the weld region and also in the heat affected zone. And that is why the weld joint performance is found to vary uh, significantly with the uh, with respect to the direction of the weld that is called a longitudinal direction and uh, uh, transverse to the weld or along the uh, thickness of the weld. And this variation leads to the very an isotropic uh, nature or behavior in respect of performance of the weld joint from the metallurgical, mechanical and chemical point of view. There are some other points uh, based on which we can uh, compare the welding with the other joining processes. The reliability of the weld joint in general is considered to be lower than the mechanical joints and that is why these joints have not been used uh, uh, very commonly for critical applications like in construction of bridges and uh, uh, the aerospace components. But nowadays with the advancement of the welding technologies, uh, the weld joints are now being commonly used in the, in the fabrication of the components used in nuclear reactors and uh, the aerospace components and uh, uh, the bridges. Even nowadays, all welded bridges are also being fabricated in, even in the hilly areas. So, there has been significant improvement in uh, the reliability of the weld joints with the advancement of the welding technology. Uh, during the welding, lot of material is uh, lost in form of the spatter and uh, however, this loss uh, of the material in form of spatter varies with the welding processes. Uh, this kind of loss is not observed in case of other joining techniques like uh, adhesive joining and the mechanical joining. Even in the welding processes, the TIG welding offers the very a minimum loss of the material in form of a sweater, while the shielded metal arc welding process and the gas metal arc welding process offer the higher sweater, which may range from uh, 2 to 5 percent. So, this loss of material is also a uh, loss of metal worth, because those sweaters cannot be used for any other purpose. The capability of the welding processes in respect of the finish and the dimensional accuracy is in general poor, because the weld joints which are produced have typically ripples on the uh, welded surface and these need to be removed and the machined 
to avoid any kind of stress concentration effect, effect related with poor surface roughness of the weld joints. Further, due to uh, the localized heating and cooling uh, causes the poor dimensional control over the, uh, the dimens, uh, over the uh, weld joints uh, which are produced. And therefore, dimensional accuracy and the surfaceness of the components fabricated using welding is comparatively uh, poor as compared to uh, that of uh, the mechanical joints and the adhesive joints. Uh, another uh, point is uh, related with the criticality uh, of uh, application and the use of the joining technique. Uh, as I said, because of the poor reliability of the weld joints, these are normally not uh, recommended for critical application. But uh, uh, nowadays, with the advancement of the technology, the welded joints are being used even for critical applications. However, they need uh, the special treatments once the joint is developed, which may involve short pinning or the post well heat treatment and uh, the treatment for removing the residual stresses if they are present in the weld joint. Another uh, specific uh, feature related to the welding, which is not uh, common with other joining techniques is the reduction in ductile to brittle transition. Uh, the, the metal systems which show very good toughness and the ductility under the normal temperature conditions, they, they are this behavior uh, changes very abruptly and uh, it shows uh, a very brittle and the low toughness behavior under the low temperature conditions. So, the especially the weld joints made of the structural steels below minus 20 degree centigrade show very brittleness and they are not able to take up the impact loads and that is why many times this, this behavior leads to the catastrophic failure of the weld joint. Now, we will look into some uh, the advantages which are offered by the welding as a technique to joint the different components and get the desired size and shape. The welding offers the permanent joint which uh, uh, results in uh, 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 as an integral part of the work piece. So, this uh, once the joint is made uh, the different members of the joint uh, forms uh, as an integral component of the main component fabricated by or main part fabricated by the welding. The joints can be stronger than the base metal. The uh, depending upon the filler metal being used for development of the weld joints, uh, the strength of the joint can be uh, uh, greater than the base metal or weaker. So, uh, if uh, the, the weld joint is subjected for very severe loading conditions, normally the joints are made using the filler metals which offer the greater strength than the base metal. And whenever this happens, we say that the efficiency of the joint is greater than 100 percent, because the joint efficiency is measured from the ratio of tensile strength of the weld joint to that of the base metal. So, if the weld joint is stronger than the base metal, then the joint efficiency becomes greater than 100. And uh, another important and the good feature of the welding is that it results in the metallic continuity between the members being joined. So, there is hardly any chances for uh, getting the corrosive uh, 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 liquid or corrosive medium in between the members being joined and the joint uh, forms uh, an integral part uh, of the main assembly. The joining by the welding is economical also once the infrastructure in respect of the manpower and the system and the welding system has been uh, developed, then large scale welding helps to develop uh, the weld and to have the required joints economically also. And another important feature of the welding, it is not respect, restricted to the factory environment, because 
the joining can be done at the site also uh, for uh, making the repairs or for uh, reclaiming the worn out components. So, uh, and this can be done in addition to the joining in the factory conditions. Uh, so, this is uh, this helps to uh, uh, helps to perform uh, the repairs and, uh, and uh, the get the desired uh, size and shape in the components, uh, not necessarily in the factory environment, but also at the site uh, or in the difficult situations. Provided we can provide the desired source of the power, which can be done using the suitable generators if the regular power supply is not available. Uh, in addition to the advantages, uh, the welding faces many limitations also. There are many uh, disadvantageous components related with the welding, because uh, only expert persons can produce the sound joints, especially for critical applications. That is why the cost related with the labor for developing the weld joint is in general high, uh, even a small carelessness on the part of the worker can lead to the development of the joints with the poor integrity and the poor reliability, which may not be good for the critical applications. The further the joint is a, a joint made by the welding uh, is permanent in nature. So, if the dissembling of the members is required due to any reason, this, then, then this uh, becomes a problem and that is why the permanent joints made by the welding uh, creates problem in the dissembling if required. This frequently causes uh, the damage to the component if they are dissembled using uh, the cutting or the mechanical force. Uh, the another uh, limitation associated with the welding is the uh, release of the hazardous fumes and the vapors that are generated during the welding. Inhaling of these uh, uh, hazardous fumes and the vapors frequently causes uh, the uh, irritation in eyes and other health issues. So, uh, these uh, smokes, hazardous smokes and the vapors must be uh, taken out of uh, the welding area efficiently using suitable suction and the chimney arrangement. Uh, especially in the welding of the zinc and a stainless steel hazardous fumes generated uh, must be handled and taken care of carefully to avoid any adverse effect on the performance on the health of uh, uh, the welders that are in place. The poor reliability of uh, the joint is also one of the major concerns, A very careful assessment of the base metal in respect of the mechanical and metallurgical properties is required before uh, taking the decision about the welding. And uh, uh, once the proper welding procedure is established for developing weld joint, then only we can develop a weld joint of uh, the re reasonably good uh, reliability. Otherwise, in general, uh, the carelessness on the part of uh, the welding procedure specification or implementation of the welding by the workers frequently lead to the poor reliability and uh, which is uh, uh, and therefore, uh, these are not preferred for critical applications. Now, we will see that uh, how the welding is used in the different sectors from the application point of view. Resistance welding is mainly used in the automotive sector for joining thin sheets for example, car bodies and the oil tank components. Thermite welding is used for joining the rails in the railways. Uh, like thermite welding is commonly used for uh, making the rail joints in the railways. Uh, this is a chemical process, we are using exothermic reactions, a lot of heat is generated, which is used for uh, melting the edges of uh, uh, or the faint surfaces of the rails to develop the weld joints. Tungsten inert gas welding is used mainly in aerospace and the nuclear reactors, because the TIG process offers very high quality 
of the weld joints uh, due to the very effective shielding and the short arc length and uh, that is why uh, the aerospace and the nuclear re reactor weld joints are commonly uh, made using the tungsten inert gas welding process. Submerged arc welding process is used uh, for uh, used in the heavy engineering industry and the shift work because the submerged arc welding process using very high current generates a lot of heat and helps to melt the fin surfaces of uh, the thick plates and that is why it is commonly used in heavy engineering industry and uh, for fabrication of the CP structures. The gas metal, weld, metal arc welding process offers the good shielding and the high deposition rate and that is why it helps in fabricating very good weld joints uh, in the pressure vessel industry. And the shielded metal arc welding process is uh, very commonly used for depositing the weld metal for the general purpose and for the repair purpose. And uh, it is said that approximately uh, 80 percent of the weld metal is deposited using the shielded metal arc welding process. But uh, those uh, who use uh, uh, the shielded metal arc welding process for general uh, applications, they are not mostly the trained and uh, the welders, but they somehow train to deposit in the weld metal so that the metallic continuity can be obtained. And we will see some other uh, applications uh, specific uh, component wise where welding is used for development of uh, the joints. It involves like the welding in pressure vessel, pre welding of the components in construction of the bridges, welding of uh, uh, the bars and the beams uh, for construction uh, for developing the joints in uh, uh, truss joints of the trusses and uh, uh, which are used in uh, building structures and the towers. The joining very critical components used in aircrafts and the spacecraft parts. So, uh, the, the welding is also used uh, for joining the stainless steel and uh, the steel sheets uh, for fabrication of the railway coaches. Additionally, for joining the different uh, electronic circuitry components and the electrical uh, components, the welding is commonly used in electrical and electronic industry. In the defense, defense industry, the many uh, the military uh, systems are uh, uh, fabricated with the help of uh, the, the welding uh, process. Similarly, in oil and natural gas sector, the long pipelines are laid uh, and joined together by the welding process, laying of uh, the railway tracks and uh, joining and they are joining by the thermite, uh, thermite welding process is common. Nuclear installations in the ship building sector also the welding is commonly used. The, uh, in, in automobile sector like uh, the motorcycles, scooters and the cars very commonly involve uh, the welding, especially spot welding for joining the different components. If you see uh, the what are the specific uh, components and the parts uh, uh, which are joined together by uh, welding, uh, like uh, joining welding is commonly used for development of the transport tankers which uh, are used for transporting the oils, water and the milk. Welding is also used for welding tubes and the pipes, chains and LPG cylinders. The welding is used for developing the steel furnitures in form of gates, doors and the door frames and the bodies and the welding is very commonly used for making the goods like refrigerator, washing machines, microwave ovens. If we see that how it is used in specific factors, the welding has found its first major use in the area of pressure vessels <coughs> for developing the different components. This weld welding has helped considerably 
to increase the operating temperatures and the pressure conditions under which uh, these uh, the welded pressure vessels can be used as compared to the pressure vessels. You can see here the component, uh, the pressure vessel component being welded and followed by their testing. The testing is uh, uh, very important in pressure vessels to ensure the integrity of the weld joints, because these work uh, under very severe conditions of the temperature and the pressure, any sort of the leakage or the weakness can lead to the disastrous accidents. That is why a careful welding is required in case of the pressure vessels and the submerged dark welding and the MIG welding process are very commonly used in the pressure vessel sectors. The, the bridges, the construction of the bridges uh, requires the joints uh, which uh, can perform uh, the successfully under very and the very high reliability. The joints in bridges are considered to be uh, critical because it is associated with the life and uh, with the, uh, the loss of property. Therefore, mostly riveted joints have been used in the past which offer high reliability, but uh, with the development of the welding technology uh, has now led to the application of the welded joints in the bridges structures and now all welded bridges structures are also being used in India and even the welded structures have been allowed for construction of the bridges in the hilly areas. The ships are shipping is one of the biggest industry where um, the welding is very extensively used for development of the weld joints. However, earlier the ships were uh, produced by the riveting only uh, for joining the uh, different components. Over 10 million rivets uh, were used uh, for example, in case of the Queen Mary ships and the welding found its uh, place in shipbuilding somewhere around 1920 and presently all the welded ships are commonly used. You can see here the welded structure of the ship and frequently it is required to carry out the repair work under the uh, water conditions in case of ships to check the leakage or to, uh, to uh, repair the broken components. So, the welding uh, is uh, commonly used in development and the repair of the ship uh, structures. In the buildings, arc welding is extensively used for fabricating the steel structures such as trusses, towers in construction industry. This figure just shows an example of uh, that where welding is being used for joining the trusses. In the transport industry, welding has been extensively used in the aircraft and the spacecraft, both spot welding and the TIG welding is extensively used for fabrication of aircraft structures and for say joining of uh, the skin sheet to the body. You can see here the welding of aircraft structural parts by, uh, um, by the TIG welding and you can see here uh, that how the welding of the aircraft structural part is being done. And then in surface transport, the railways involves very extensive use of the welding for fabrication of the structures, uh, fabrication of structures related with coaches, wagons and for overlaying of the wheels, joining of the rails by the flash butt welding machines and for repair of the cracked or the damaged tracks by thermite welding. You can see the joint made by the thermite welding and here some repair work is in progress. So, here uh, wherever uh, the localized damage takes place and either due to the wear or due to the development of the cracks, things are repaired uh, by the welding invariably and that is why in the railways the welding is extensively 
used in automotive sector, the fabrication of the automobile components like chases, body and its, its structures, fuel tanks and joining of the doors and uh, door hinges require uh, welding and it is common to uh, have uh, uh, the spot welding in the uh, for joining the body parts uh, of the car and uh, uh, the fuel tanks in the uh, two wheeler industry. Most of the engineering systems used in electrical industry are fabricated using the welding starting from the generation to the application side involving first generation then distribution and utilization of the electrical energy. So, for the generation various components like uh, fabrication of the pan stocks, water control gates, condensers, turbine blades and cooling fins are fabricated using the welding. Thereafter, for the distribution electrical transmission towers and the distribution system equipments and the transformers need uh, the welding for development of their systems and their components. Similarly, utilization of the electrical energy in this sector, uh, in this area of the electrical industry, the development of uh, the electrical motor stators and uh, other electrical machines require welding to get the desired size and shape. In the electronic industry, micro joining is extensively used uh, for joining the thin and small size and shape components. Micro joining techniques like ultrasonic and the soldering are used in uh, electronic industry for joining the different components. Soldering is used for joining electronic components to the, uh, the printed circuit boards and uh, the robotic soldering is commonly used for joining the parts of the printed circuit boards of the computers, television, communication equipments and other control equipments. In the nuclear industry, the welding is used for fabrication of the spheres of the nuclear reactors, pipeline bands and the joining of the pipes for carrying the heavy water reactor. This is a typical example of uh, the, uh, the shell of uh, the nuclear reactor. And here you can see uh, the in the different in de uh, defense industry, the joining of the many components of the tanks, uh, uh, body fabrication, joining of the turret mounting to the main body of the tanks involves the use of the welding for development of their products. In oil and natural gas industry, the welding is used for joining the pipes while laying the crude oil uh, and the gas pipelines. So, for uh, laying the pipelines to join the different uh, pipes, uh, it is required to use the welding and the construction of the tankers for their storages and transportation also involves the use of the welding for the fabrication of the tankers. Offshore structures are established with the help of the welding uh, for joining the different components. Similarly, in dockyards and loading and uploading cranes are also uh, involved the use of uh, the welding for fabrication of their structures. So, here we can see uh, the another uh, set of uh, the, the joining techniques which involves very small amount of uh, uh, the heat energy for melting uh, and uh, developing the joints of the thin components. Micro joining uses the techniques for joining of uh, uh, this technique is used for joining of uh, the thin wires to wires, foil to foil or foil to the wire for producing the junctions of the thermal compo thermocouples and the strain gauges. And this is done using the processes like uh, the microplasma, ultrasonic, laser and electron beam. All these processes apply very high energy density for melting and the the small components rapidly and uh, thereafter the solidification of the, the metal helps to develop the weld joints without compromising much on electrical and thermal properties. And these joints frequently uh, are not expected to take uh, the load and uh, that is why uh, these are of uh, mostly of a very small cross section and made using uh, the low 
uh, heat processes like microplasma, ultrasonic, laser and electron beam welding processes. So, here uh, we have seen in this uh, presentation that uh, the for manufacturing different engineering components made of the different materials, we use uh, the ma different manufacturing processes like machining, welding, casting and the forming and to get the desired size and shape uh, of uh, uh, a material, it is important to consider its properties and the performance expected from it. We have also seen that uh, the welding is completely, welding is used for developing the components of the completely simple shapes and uh, there are different ways for making uh, the joints uh, which can perform the intended function. Welding is however, different from the other joining techniques in number of ways. If applied, this can be very successfully used to take up the load and to withstand under the surface conditions successfully for long. In the coming lectures, we will see that how the welding processes can be classified and what are the various aspects related to the heat generation and the kind of uh, uh, the metallurgical aspects related with the welding, the, the way by which integrity of the weld joints can be inspected and uh, how to uh, establish uh, the performance of the weld joint for establish uh, uh, for static as well as for the dynamic loading. So, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.